in today's society, showering and general hygiene is fortunately part of most people's daily routine. Yet some folks out there have, shall we say, embraced their natural bodily functions? From people who literally haven't washed in decades to others who have never brushed their teeth, here are some people that are au naturel in the worst ways possible. The World's Dirtiest Man Hidden among the trash and debris in the Iranian village of Dejga, you might just stumble across Amu Haji. Amu who? Well, Amu Haji, the world's dirtiest man. Yep, this 87-year-old has been saving his stink up for over 60 years. And well, it kind of shows. Amu apparently fears water, claiming that any form of cleanliness brings him sickness. Because of his refusal to wash, he's developed tough, callous skin, which almost looks like an elephant's. This is likely due to something called dermatitis neglecta, which can occur when a person severely neglects personal hygiene, allowing dead skin cells to build up, resulting in dark patches of scaly rough skin like Amu's. On top of his fear of water, part of Amu's reason to choose this life of dirt and solitude came from heartbreak, after being rejected by a woman way back in his 20s. Which is an odd response, though I can imagine the scene. Oh, you don't want my hand in marriage? Well, just you watch. I'm gonna spend eternity isolated in dirt. You'll see. You'll all see. Jokes aside, while it remains unclear why rejection led Amu to this state, it seems he's content with his way of life. And while for the most part he is homeless, often residing in a grave-like hole in the ground, he does occasionally take shelter in a brick shack gifted to him by concerned villagers. It turns out he's quite the chef too. His signature dish? Well, according to local news sources, his favorite meal is rotten porcupine meat. Mmm, just like grandma used to make. And being the dirt-focused visionary that he is, Amu even found a way to smoke animal poop. Yep, according to multiple sources, when he can't acquire tobacco, he instead loads up his rusty pipe with animal feces and puffs away. I guess at this point he might as well stay on brand with the whole as filthy as possible thing. While a lack of cleanliness can lead to disease, infection, and potentially death, it seems that at 87, Amu is still going strong, possibly having become immunized to the dirt and bacteria. But I guess the real question is, is smoking animal poop the secret to a long life? Only one way to find out. Not so luscious locks. It's not uncommon for people to take their hair very seriously. After all, it's one of the many ways we're defined in this world. <clears throat> Case in point, the Karen cut. Hair is all about self-expression, and it just so happens that some people express themselves by, well, not cleaning themselves. Take for example this hairstyle, an example of something known as a Polish plate. This big old heap of hair is typically a result of letting hair grow extremely long without any washing or combing. It was especially common among medieval-era European peasants, specifically people from the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, for whom hair grooming was often neglected. Bruh, look at this dude! But it was more than merely a lack of head-and-shoulder shampoo that led to this hairstyle. This tangled and matted mass of hair, weirdly enough, was revered, and even encouraged as it was seen in certain religious circles as good luck. Many believed that this grimy, matted hair was a blessing to keep illness away. So perhaps we should all ditch those face masks and grow a Polish plate, huh? Nowadays, most people are aware that such a lump of unwashed hair can harbor bacteria, lice, and other pests, and we have a wealth of hair care available to us to keep our long locks flowing free. Some people even wash their hair daily, though doing so can cause shampoo to strip our hair of its natural oils, leaving it unhealthy. So while two to three days is a good amount of time between washes, too much more than that probably isn't going to look too pretty as you can see with this guy, who allegedly didn't wash his hair for three years. Now, dreadlocks and afros, although often grown intentionally to very appealing effect, can become a little wild pretty easily. Dreadlocks form when hair falls out of the scalp and becomes matted together with the hair that is still growing, creating clumps of hair, not too dissimilar to the Polish plate. Don't be fooled though, they still require care, like carefully defining individual sections and treating them with wax to achieve the desired look. Afros similarly require combing to keep the hairs from becoming matted like this guy's. But it has to be said, while matted, unwashed hair like that might not be the most hygienic thing, there's something oddly satisfying about watching it being pried apart. Firestarter 
They say you shouldn't play with fire, but for Ludwig Dolezal, that's all he could do. Suffering from a rare psychological condition called pyromania, he was constantly compelled to set things alight. As a result of his constant proximity to fires he started, of various sizes and intensity, Ludwig's skin turned jet black from smoke and his hair charred, leaving him with the title of Europe's dirtiest man. He spent his days in a derelict farmhouse on an abandoned farm in the Herodic Kravlov region of the Czech Republic, where he could set alight tires, plastic, and, well, anything he could get his hands on. And on cold nights, he would allegedly keep warm by nestling into warm ash, rendering his whole body black like a piece of coal. Because of this condition, Ludwig was unable to work and instead relied on government welfare. Except the Czech government only gave him food packages instead of cash, fearing that he would just burn the latter. It was only one day in December 2016 when Ludwig didn't collect his food parcel from the shop that locals began to realize something was wrong, and he was found lifeless in his dilapidated farmhouse. While the cause of death remains unconfirmed publicly, I can't imagine that the years of exposure to flames did him any good. In fact, exposure to the fine particles of smoke can lead to a range of problems, from burning eyes to chronic heart and lung disease, often causing premature deaths. Not only that, but if he was burning plastic, he might have even succumbed to carbon monoxide poisoning. Whatever the reason for Ludwig's death, he will certainly be remembered. Not necessarily for the best reasons, though. Anti-Shower Spray Why does my horse roll around in its own filth all day? Is a question chemist David Whitlock was asked on a date 18 years ago. Unusual subject matter for a candlelit dinner, but nevertheless, it was this question that oddly prompted David to never shower again. Endeavoring to find an answer, David found that horses have, over time, figured out they keep their skin healthy by rubbing themselves in dirt. The reason for this, unbeknownst to horses of course, is that dirt often contains Nitrosomonas eutropha, a very common bacteria that feeds on ammonia, converting it into nitrite, a molecule with anti-infective properties. And as ammonia can be found in the sweat of horses and humans alike, it is largely responsible for sweat's oniony aroma. David got to thinking, if only humans could bathe in dirt just the same. Well, not the exact same, but something similar, as a means to cut out the need to shower. So David collected some Nitrosomonas eutropha and turned it into his miracle spray called Mother Dirt, which with just two sprays a day allegedly keeps the need to shower away. And with his spray close at hand, aside from sanitizing his hands and occasionally rinsing actual dirt from his body, David has avoided the shower for 18 years. That's great, but why not just take a shower? Well, David argues that showering not only washes away germs, but the skin's protective oils too. Washing away these oils can be damaging as it alters the skin's pH level, which should be around pH 5.5. However, most soaps can have pH levels as high as 11, which can cause an overproduction of sebum, the oily substance our bodies produce to protect the skin. And with all that excess sebum, the body can develop dryness, acne, and dermatitis along with other things. To avoid all of this, David suggests that we don't clean our skin per se, but instead maintain its original condition by copying horses. That is, covering our bodies with good bacteria, not rolling around in our own filth. And David isn't the only one who said sayonara to the soap either. Dr. James Hamblin, a 39-year-old physician, began his hygiene hiatus over five years ago for similar reasons, pH levels and so on. But much like David Whitlock, Dr. James says he now reaps the benefits of natural, healthy skin, and perhaps the proof is in the pudding. I mean, look at the guy. He's 39 and looks about 24. But still, the question on many people's minds, and frankly one that Dr. James is tired of answering is, does he smell? While Dr. James admits that he initially smelled like an oily beast, he now claims, or rather his girlfriend claims, he smells like a person, whatever that means. Whatever he really smells like, James has suggested deodorant, soap, and the chemical imbalance they cause to the skin as, surprisingly, the cause rather than solution to body odor. With the pH level changes, soaps can cause triggering imbalances in oil and bacteria. This in turn can cause odor, prompting us to wash again, creating a bit of a paradox. However, Dr. James argues that if you power through the initial stink and stop disturbing your skin's natural pH level, your ecosystem will reach a steady state. In other words, you won't smell like a fresh meadow, but you also won't smell like B.O. either. You'll just smell like, in James's words, a person. And with his intriguing theories in mind, I kind of want to get a whiff of Dr. James. 
But besides maintaining our skin's natural oils and bacteria, there are other reasons you may want to shower a little less. From being purified to pumped, and in most cases heated, it takes a lot of energy to get water to your tub. Let's say the average shower is around 10 minutes. That's going to use a conservative estimate of around 21 gallons of water. Assuming you shower every day, that's 147 gallons a week. And a year? Well, you're looking at around 7,644 gallons, which is roughly enough to fill 500 beer kegs. That's not all though. With the average American family being made up of three, most families are likely using in excess of 22,900 gallons of water a year. And that's just in showering. Meanwhile, heating that shower water produces four and a half pounds of carbon dioxide per 10 minutes, or around three quarters of a ton of CO2 over a year's worth of showers for one person. While carbon dioxide is a naturally occurring greenhouse gas, an excess of these gases can cause too much of the sun's energy to become trapped in the atmosphere, raising the Earth's global temperature, and this accelerates the rise of ocean levels and the melting of ice caps beyond the Earth's natural rate of climate change. Now, I'm not here to guilt trip you. A hot daily shower is hardly a mortal sin, given that by comparison, the average car produces around eight tons of CO2 a year. But for the sake of our planet, we might want to cut down a little, or alternatively, give David Whitlock's mother dirt spray a try. With a 71% four to five star rating on Amazon, out of 490 ratings, perhaps the age of dirt really is upon us. To wipe or not to wipe? Ever heard of the term ghost poop? If not, allow me to enlighten you. Crude as it might be, a ghost poop is the experience of uh, dropping the kids off at the pool and not actually needing to wipe. That is, when you do wipe, there's nothing there. You with me? Anyway, an anonymous woman, who we'll call Mrs. Poopsworth, was reading her boyfriend a Reddit thread about someone else's boyfriend, who always had stained underwear because he never wiped after going number two. After reading her boyfriend this gross Reddit story, Mrs. Poopsworth expected him to laugh. Instead, he retorted back with, well, it's because he doesn't get enough fiber. Yep, in a gross twist of events, it turned out her boyfriend was part of the ghost poop gang, claiming that his fiber-rich diet means his poop is so well-formed, it comes out clean every time, meaning he doesn't need to use any toilet paper. Now, while a fiber-rich diet does bulk up poop by absorbing water, it doesn't guarantee a ghost poop. So obviously, best to wipe. Still, concerned by his girlfriend's butt-wiping habit, Mrs. Poopworth's boyfriend even went as far as to buy her some fiber supplements, because she obviously must have loose stools to require TP. And they say romance is dead. Except for these two lovers, it just might be. The woman admits she now feels unattracted to her partner, and justifiably so. I'd suggest that maybe it's time her boyfriend cleans up his act before Mrs. Poopsworth wipes him clean away. World's Longest Hair in February 2010, Vietnamese man Tran Vey He passed away, and let's just say he left a long legacy behind. Although it was never officially confirmed by the Guinness Book of Records, it's thought that Tran Van He had the world's longest hair, at over 22 feet. According to Tran, he once became very sick after having a haircut, so for 50 years he let his hair grow wild and free, resulting in a thick, matted cord around his body, which people have likened to a furry boa constrictor. But if you ask me, it looked more like a giant furry poop. And with Tran going up to 11 years between washes, it probably smelled like one too. As you might have guessed, this hunk of hair was fairly hefty, at an astonishing 23 pounds, and became quite the inconvenience to Tran, making it impossible to do things like riding a motorcycle. As a result, he would coil his trail of hair on top of his head. And just imagine the weight of that thing. 22 feet of hair will give you such a crick in the neck. Sadly, when Tran passed away from natural causes at the age of 79, he had never officially received the title of world's longest hair. So considering the title still available, filling up to it, one woman who could be in the running is Thailand's very own Rapunzel, Jim Srisuk, a 57-year-old woman who hasn't cut her hair in over 20 years. While the length isn't officially confirmed, this chunky dreadlock is as long as Jim is tall, appearing to measure in at around five feet. She recalls that her hair naturally began to twill together in her 30s, though honestly, it seems more likely that she just wasn't doing a great job of cleaning or brushing it. But who am I to judge? Concerned about her hair, she sought the advice of her village's elders who superstitiously warned that if she were to cut it or even wash her hair, it would bring her bad luck. And while scientifically these claims obviously don't quite check out, 
she isn't taking any chances and neither cuts or washes her hair. So, moral of the story? Well, maybe take that old saying, listen to your elders with a grain of salt. Terrible Teeth. Back in 2007, British network Channel 4 debuted a show called Embarrassing Bodies. Its premise was essentially televised doctor's appointments where patients would go and see a doctor about their embarrassing ailments. Because you know, why show one person your most intimate issues when you can broadcast it on national television? Anyway, in 2011, a 21-year-old man named Jay went on the show, and I'm sure you can probably guess why. Yep, those few teeth left in his head were a result of never brushing his teeth in his whole life. He admitted that over the years he'd eaten the wrong foods, drank a lot of soda, and just didn't take care of his teeth, causing them to become not so pearly white. Luckily for Jay, the trade-off of exposing his revolting hygiene for our viewing pleasure meant he received a fresh set of chompers. So let's just hope he's since become acquainted with some Sensodyne and a toothbrush. But what exactly happens to cause all that nastiness if you don't brush your teeth? While dentists recommend you brush twice a day, we all know it isn't exactly fatal to skip a day or two. However, fail to brush over an extended period and you'll begin to notice a few changes. A sticky film of bacteria and fungi known as plaque will build up and will wear down the thin outer covering of the tooth, otherwise known as enamel. Plaque can also harden into tartar, which is hard to remove. That's why toothpaste is so important. Not only does it remove plaque, but it also contains fluoride which strengthens tooth enamel and fights tooth decay. When continually failing to brush, enamel weakens and the tooth becomes a brownish color until small holes called cavities form in it. Get through the enamel and all that is left is dentin. This yellow colored tissue lies beneath the enamel and deteriorates at a much faster rate. Dentin also connects directly to the nerves, so once compromised, you may begin to experience sensitivity or sudden pain while consuming hot and cold food. Beyond this, bacteria might infect the tooth, causing inflammation and pockets of pus at the tooth's base. So yeah, listen to your dentist and brush your teeth, folks. Anybody else have the sudden urge to go brush their teeth? Or is that just me? One person who certainly isn't brushing their teeth and couldn't care less is Alice Kidd, a 23-year-old from South Croydon, England. She boasts that she hasn't brushed her teeth in a decade. And when you see them, you'll be shocked. Shocked at how clean they are, that is. Phenomenally, her pearly whites seem to have maintained their shine. But how on earth? What's her secret? Well, besides sheer luck, Alice claims to only drink water and says she avoids red wine, soda, nicotine, and all sweet things, including fruit. And her secret weapon? Well, it could be your chewing gum. Yep, turns out when you chew sugar-free gum, your mouth produces more saliva, which helps to neutralize and rinse away the acid that forms in your mouth when you eat. This extra saliva deposits minerals such as sodium, calcium, and copper, to name a few, onto your teeth, which strengthen enamel and reduce tooth decay. While this could potentially lend credence to Alice's claims, she's never had any trouble with bad breath, I'm not going to be volunteering to check if she's telling the truth. Belly Button Beast Belly buttons are weird, and they mark the spot where our umbilical cords once were, which at one time was our only means of nutrients. Yet once we're ejected from the womb, the belly button, medically known as the navel, serves no real purpose. Although you might be shocked to find out that upwards of 67 types of bacteria nestle inside our navels. And even worse, if you're not so squeaky clean, something called a navel stone might start growing inside your belly button, which is what you can see being removed in this revolting clip. Check it out. You're letting go of the tweezers, right? Oh, yeah! Can you pass a bucket? Uh, I think I'm gonna puke. These monstrosities, navel stones, are gradually formed when the sebum and keratin from dead skin cells gather over time. Whip these up in the warmth of your belly button and a hard, dark mass takes shape. Typically, they're not painful and are easily removed by a doctor with forceps, though they can produce a distinctively unpleasant odor. Worst of all, they actually take years to form and often go unnoticed. So maybe go ahead and take a little scratch and sniff right now to check. And once you've done that and wiped off your fingers, why not use those digits to give this video a like and subscribe? All done? Great, now let's get back to it. World's Longest Nails Admit it, there's a small part in all of us that dreams of fame and stardom. Yet there are some things you wouldn't want to be famous for. Well, unless you're Kim Kardashian and Ray J. But that is a tale for when you get older, children. <clears throat> anyway, I'm talking about being famous for the world's longest fingernails. 
Gross, right? Well, in 2014, 78-year-old Sridhar Chalal, an Indian man from the city of Prune, won a spot in the Guinness Book of Records for his lengthy claws. Sridhar didn't cut the nails on his left hand for 66 years, and with a combined length of 358 inches end-to-end, -end, they were almost as long as a London bus. However, these nails weren't without their problems. Sridhar complained about sleeping, saying he couldn't move or pull over the covers. He also feared that the wind, children, or even motor vehicles would damage his precious nails. Yet despite all this, plus the struggle to find love as a young man, Sridhar remains very proud of what he achieved. But why? Well, according to Sridhar, when he was a child, he and his friend were told off by a teacher after they accidentally broke her nail. They asked why she was so angry, to which she explained that unless they had long nails, they could never understand the care required to look after them. It was then that Sridhar decided to never cut his nails again. Well, that was until 2018, when he had to cut them off with a power tool at Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum in New York, where they now take pride of place. And believe it or not, nails that long aren't exactly healthy. I know, shocking. Due to the weight of his nails, Sridhar now suffers from disfigured fingers, loss of function in his left hand, and even nerve damage through to his left elbow and shoulder, which has allegedly left him deaf in one ear. Beauty is pain, right? So who's the most unhygienic person you've ever met? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.